That was in my blue car, the 996 Turbo. And this 2,000 horsepower Super came up alongside me. I couldn't believe it. What an opportunity. He jumped on it. I jumped on it. I could hear his turbo spooling, making all kinds of noise, and And I just left him. Left him in the dust. The thing made over 2,000 horsepower on the dyno just last week. I barely make 1,000. And I had my boost turned down, so I was barely making 750. So maybe that's one of the signs that his turbo was too big, huh? And lag is one of the primary issues. Turbo lag can be caused by a couple things. It can be caused by the exhaust headers having too much volume. Your turbo is too big. The compressor wheel is too big. There's literally just too much inertia on the thing. And when the, the turbo is that big, yeah, steady state, it can be a dyno clean. And it can be a whole lot of fun showing all your buddies these huge power numbers. But when you get on the street, it's not necessarily what's going to rule. Maybe at Texas Mile. Not necessarily on the, the freeway in the, just a friendly drag race. Because sometimes the little turbo, maybe not this small, but point taken, a smaller turbo can produce sometimes better power under the curve than a big turbo. A big turbo might not even hit till 6,000 RPMs. Whereas a properly sized turbo will come on about half the RPM range. And with this turbo sized properly, you're good and gone well before they even ramp up on boost. Besides lag, are there any other signs that my turbo may be too big? Two immediately come to mind. One, you had to cut a hole in your hood. The turbo's so big, the thing's so friggin' massive that you had to cut a hole in the hood to, to even fit the thing. Number two, if you've ever heard a turbo go choo 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 choo, <laughs> that's surge. That means it's trying to build too much pressure, but it doesn't have enough airflow. But don't big turbos always make more horsepower than smaller turbos? Believe it or not, no. There's been a couple cases that we've run into, specifically on uh, lower octane fuels, 91 octane kind of a weird scenario and it took us a little while to figure it out what was going on but some of these guys with you know say a 997 turbo he would have an alpha kit on his car that had the smaller turbos little alpha 28 tiny little turbine wheels maxed out somewhere in the you know 600 horsepower range on pump gas and the guy's like I want to make 800 to a thousand horsepower so I'm gonna put on some 3076s the turbine wheel got bigger the larger turbine wheel is releasing more of the exhaust gases, lowering the back pressure in the exhaust system, which is letting more of the exhaust escape the combustion chamber, which all sounds great, except for when you're dealing with pump gas. If you're dealing with pump gas and you've got low octane fuel, you don't have the octane to support the higher flow. So with the tiny turbo on there, it keeps more exhaust gas in there. It dilutes the mixture, dilutes the combustion mixture, which effectively raises the octane. And it's almost like you're getting free race fuel. So the octane goes up, the little turbo can run more boost. It can make more power. You put the big turbo on there, you get a cleaner mixture in there. All of a sudden it runs into knock and you end up making less power. So are there any advantages of having a larger turbo? Oh, absolutely. And what are some of the big ones? Oof. One we ran, Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. The orange 997 GT2 just blew my socks off. We put that thing on the dyno after a build. It was a 4.2 liter build, GT3 intake manifold, ported heads, big cams, well, just reground cams. But the magic was GT3794 turbos. Some of the biggest turbos we had ever put on one of these. First pull scared me to death when I looked up at the dyno. The thing had made 1134 horsepower at the tires with the boost controller turned off at only 18 pounds of boost. It was just unheard of. We could not believe it. And the thing went on to make like 1569 horsepower to the tires at, at higher boost pressure. Wow. So the thing was a real, real happy. Just, just incredible. In contrast, the normal GT... GT3586 HTAs. The same boost pressure might have been around 850. A set of 
GT 3076s at 18 pounds might be around 650 or 700. A set of K24s on a 996 Turbo. Well, they're done at 530 at the tires. A set of K16s, they're done at 430 at the tires. So the exact same engine with a big turbo just breathed and breathed and breathed and it was just incredible the kind of power that thing made. However, in some instances we've done turbo upgrades, minor turbo upgrades where the customer might be looking for a little bit better boost response or a little bit better efficiency and you know on the top end we might eke out you know, another 50 or 100 horsepower with a, a minor turbo change but boost for boost if the turbos aren't radically different the numbers are going to be very similar but you can gain slightly different characteristics different AR ratio on the turbine wheel a slightly smaller turbine wheel size a slightly bigger compressor wheel size all those things might net a little bit better boost response a little bit more flow a little bit more efficiency most of them are just in small increments as opposed to that one that just went nuts for example is on a 993 or 996 turbo they run a k16 turbocharger stock those things have like 25 pound compressor wheels on them turbos typically make 10 horsepower per pound per minute 10 horsepower per pound per minute times 25 pounds would be 250 horsepower per turbo two turbos makes 500 horsepower maxed out that's all the air you've got so the math is pretty straightforward on doing that on the dyno you pull the 10 to 15 percent out k16s are done at about 430 but what happens in the car and we're on the dyno as you're turning the boost up you can run 1.2 1.3 1.4 well you could probably run two bar of boost early on these things but as the airflow requirement of the engine is coming up and the compressor airflow is limited your boost is just going to drop off so no matter what you do on a little k16 car they're going to max out somewhere around 0.85 to 0.9 bar by red line so at 0.85 or 0.9 bar you're going to make the max power you can and that turbo is going to have the best characteristic as you keep turning the boost up it'll keep making more and more torque but it has no more airflow to produce any more power so mm. it'll just continue to make that peak horsepower number at a lower and lower rpm and the thing will just come up and make a flat power line with this massive torque curve below that just drops like a tin stone in the water the k24s do the exact same thing a k24 stock has a 30 pound compressor can you do the math <laughs> 30 10 300 Ooh, there you go times 600 two. oh you got it <laughs> wow okay and then pull the dyno numbers out of it and you end up with about 530 of the tires they're done same thing you can run all the boost you want early in the rpm and they just fall off on boost those things still hold 1-1 one, one to 1-2 one, by red line sometimes, depending if you've got a bigger engine, a 3.8 or big intakes or something that's making the engine flow a lot more air, the turbo is still limited. So it, it's just done. So it, it falls off. So what we do on those is we just upgrade the compressors. The turbine wheel is adequate. The turbine housing is adequate. Compressor housing is adequate. So we have the, the wheels machined. We put larger wheels in, machine the housings upgrade them. For instance, a K16, we used to do K16, 16 G's, which would put a 35 pound compressor wheel on it, which gave us a net 700 at the crank or, you know, 630 or something at the tires. Now we do a K16, 65 G2 compressor that is a little bit more than that. And we've seen, you know, 630 to 650 at the wheels, which is really impressive on a K16. K24s, we've been doing the same thing for years now. K24 18G is magic on a GT2. Those things, we're putting a 40 pound compressor wheel on it. So 40 times 10, times two, times, and pull the percent out, you end up being able to make 800 horsepower to the crank on those things. And now we've even gone further with the K24 71 that has a 45 pound compressor wheel on it. And we just recently had a 
a customer out there in uh, Virginia install a set and engine dyno it and sure enough those things went up and they hit 900 horsepower at the crank out of an upgraded K24 which is really unheard of. Wow. Of course it was on a 4.1 liter E85 you know, based engine running a GT3 intake and big ports, one of our favorite cookie cutter engines. But the turbo was choking it, which kind of sounds funny. Ugh, I'm choked. I'm making 900 horsepower. I can't make any more. Oh no. So can I get whatever I want out of my turbo with a compressor upgrade? Mm, that would be lovely, but unfortunately no. And point in that that's been proven again and again is on the VGT turbos on the 997s. And we originally had done, a, a Borg Warner made a high performance wheel specifically for that turbocharger that we've run and still continue to run to this day that will make 700 horsepower all day long. It, it's really a, a nice upgrade compared to the stock turbo hits a wall somewhere in the low 500s at the tires, but people wanted to make more and more, so they went from a 63 to a 65 to a 68 millimeter compressor wheel. What's happening there is kind of like the situation we were talking about earlier with the tiny turbo and the high back pressure. It's more like pedaling your bicycle up a big hill in the wrong gear. Hmm. If you're not in a low gear, you're putting a lot of pressure on those pedals. And that's kind of similar to a compressor and a turbine wheel. And it's almost like your front sprocket and your back sprocket. You get it in the wrong gear and all of a sudden it's going to take a tremendous amount of back pressure on the turbine to spool that giant compressor wheel. It's just levers, it's actions, it's just again like a 10 speed bicycle. So you put a, a giant compressor on a VGT turbo and you can make like five or ten more horsepower but it's a lot of work when you're putting a huge compressor wheel on there and then you even do billet compressor housings and you go through all this rigmarole to put this massive compressor wheel on there and the choke is the turbine wheel and the back pressure is ridiculous and at the end of the day the thing is less responsive it's not fun to drive the back pressures are high the engine is just cranky it, it's not working out so we've tried to tune around it the VGTs have veins that open and close to change the booster response and at top Porsche has put in limits on those veins so as the RPM goes up there it's something like 46 percent vein opening or something like that on top well you can close those suckers down and you can make more boost pressure uh, and keep the boost up because normally what happens if you leave the veins in the OEM position is you can't hold boost on top because the back pressure is getting so high in the turbine side that the compressor is just not spooling up. So you clamp the veins down, you can get the boost up. But guess what happens to the horsepower? What happens? Power goes down. You just raise the boost up and you're all happy. Woo, I'm running 1.6, 1.7, 1.8 bar even on this thing. This thing's going to make 900 horsepower. No, it just dropped from 700 down to mid 600s or something because the back pressure is so high. All you've done is captured the engine in all this pressure. You got boost pressure on the inlet, back pressure on the exhaust. And what happens when you have the same pressure on the inlet and the outlet of the same orifice? Do you not get any gonna, flow? Not going to do anything. You get no flow. So you're, you've just choked the thing and, and it's going back to almost a naturally aspirated engine. So the turbo engines really need to operate with a huge pressure differential of intake versus exhaust. And when you choke the tiny turbine wheels up, you just hit a wall. And that, that wall is right around 700 on a VGT on the 997 turbo. The newer generation 991, 991.2, even the 992 and the GT2 RS, they've put bigger turbine housings, they've put bigger turbine wheels on those things and those things are producing 900 and up horsepower now. So Porsche figured that out, obviously. They wanted to make more power, but they also wanted the you know, boost response and convenience of a VGT. So they increased the turbine wheel size. Unfortunately, you can't just take those and plug them on a 997 turbo. That'd be fun. So instead of that, we upgrade the turbos, we put on Garrett's, we put on EFRs, you know, whatever the customer happens to 
put on there with their own turbo system, and then we can tune them. You can take the same engine that a VGT had on it with that tiny turbine wheel that was struggling to make 700 horsepower at 1.6 bar plus, put a set of 3076s on it, it'll make that same power at barely 1.2 par now. And really the response isn't too terrible on them. It's down a couple hundred RPMs, but you also pick up on the top end as much or more. The thing will red, rev to redline, like there's no tomorrow now with the big turbos on it. Whereas with the VGTs and the tiny turbine wheel, it chokes out on top end. It makes a lot of torque low, makes good boost response. So you've got a tiny turbo, great boost response, good torque, really hard to beat off the line, you know, compared to the bigger turbos, but you get the bigger turbos on there and they just breathe and they have all kinds of fun and it can turn the boost down, make better power, the engine gets happy.